What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize your title bar for your apps with Kinter and Python. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at customizing the title bar. So you can see up here, I've got it in green. I've changed the buttons around a little bit. I've done all kinds of things. And I get asked this question a lot. How do we customize this title bar? Because one of the arguments people have that Kinter isn't great is it doesn't look like a modern GUI because of the title bar. You can't do stuff with it. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to get around all of that. Now, there's good news and bad news. The good news is we can do things. The bad news is there's nothing built into Kinter that allows you to customize the title bar. There's no title bar settings that you can mess with to just, for instance, change the color to green. What we're gonna to have to do is remove the title bar from the window and then build our own fake title bar and we can do anything we want with that. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's go ahead and close this, head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with almost 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. Okay, so I've got our basic Kinter starter code. I've got a file called title.py. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the title bar. So if we save this, head over to our terminal and run python title.py. You notice we have a regular title bar. It has the title bar stuff. It's got these things, you know, it's got a little icon. That's just the normal default. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that. And that's actually really easy. We've actually looked at this before. So let's go remove title bar. And to do that, we just call root dot override redirect and set that equal to true. So that's override redirect all one word, override redirect. So if we save this, now I'm not gonna run this just yet because if we do, there won't be a title bar and we won't be able to close the app once we open it. We'll have to open our Windows Task Manager to close it and I don't wanna do that. So instead, let's just create a button really quick. Let's call it my button. And this is a button, we wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal close. And let's say the font, I don't know, let's just make it real big. Helvetica, size 32. And let's give this a command of root dot quit. That should work. And then let's my underscore button dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of like 100, really push it down the screen and that should work. So now if we come back over here and hit this, uh oh, you actually can't even see it because it's in the other window. Okay, let's do a quick fix here. Let's go plus negative 1500 plus 250, that should move it over into this other monitor, I hope. All right, let's run this guy again. Okay, so here you see there's no title bar. Now, this gives us a couple of problems. One, if we didn't have this button, it wouldn't be able to close. So that's the first problem. The next is we can't drag this around. We can't move it around. So we're gonna have to deal with that as well. And we will, no big deal. So let's head over here and let's create fake title bar. And to do this, I'm just going to create a variable called title underscore bar. And this is just going to be a basic Kinter frame, right? We're going to create a frame, put it at the top of the app, change its color, and that'll be our title bar. Very easy. So we want to put this in root. Let's go and let's give this a background color of any color you want. I'm just going to go dark green just because that's fun. And we can give this a relief of like raised. And for now, I'm gonna give it a border of one just to sort of show you that you can give it a border. We'll probably change that later because I don't really want a border there. So let's go title bar dot pack. Now we wanna give this an expand of one so that it stretches out the whole thing and we wanna fill X so it goes all the way across, right? So, okay, that should work. And I haven't actually put anything in there. So if we run this now, nothing will probably show up. You know, we get sort of a line there, but that doesn't really help us any. So we have to put something else in there. So let's put a label in there and let's call this title underscore label. And it's going to be a label. We want to put it in title bar and let's give it a text. Now this is where we're going to name our app. So I'm going to call this, I don't know, my awesome app. Woohoo! Right. And here we need to give this a background color of the same as our title bar. So let's go dark green. And we can give it a foreground color of anything we want. I'm just going to go white so that it kind of stands out, but you know, any color you want. 
And then let's go title underscore label dot pack. And I want to put this on side left. So it's sort of over there. And then I don't know, let's give this a pad Y of like two just to give it a little padding. So it's not real skinny. So it's sort of, sort of more the size of a title bar that you would expect. So okay, save this and run it. Boom. Now we have this title bar at the top. And you'll notice it's got sort of a, a border around it. That's because I gave it a BD of one, probably don't want that. So uh, and, and also this is right up against here. So we could fix that a number of ways. So let me close that. And let's change this back to zero. And we could give it a couple spaces like this, or we could give it a, you know, a pad X of something. I'm just gonna put a couple of spaces there and see how that looks. So let's go ahead and save this run it. Okay, that looks good. Maybe still a little too skinny. I don't know, sort of play around with it to taste. So instead of giving it a pad Y of two, maybe we give it a pad Y of four. I don't know, Let's play around. Whatever looks good to your eye. That's a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Okay, so that looks good. Now we can't drag this around. And I'd really like to be able to move this by clicking it, holding your mouse button and dragging it around. So how can we do that? It's not really a title bar if we can't do that. Well, we could just do some basic binding and we've done binding a lot in the past. So let's come up here and bind the title bar. So we're just gonna call title underscore bar dot bind. And here we could pass in two arguments. Let's call this B1 motion. Because that's you're gonna click your button and then move it around. That's B1 motion. That's the binding for that. And what do we want to happen when that happens? Well, let's run a function called move our app, right? So we don't have that function yet. So we need to create that. So let's define move app and we need to pass in an event. So I'll just call it E. So how do we move this guy? Well, think about moving your app around. Well, right up here, we moved it programmatically by adding in these two coordinates, right? And that just moved the app from one monitor to the other. So negative 1500 moved it all the way over, all the way over to my other monitor, right? So we can do that same thing programmatically here. So let's just call root.geometry. And here we can create an F string. And you know, this is the second set of things here. This is just the size of the app. We don't want to change that. So we'll just put a plus here so that we can jump right into this part. And here we just want to create two things, this and this, which sort of coordinates with this and then this addition sign and this, right? And here we just need to pass in some coordinates, some numbers like 1500 or 250 or whatever. So we can do that whenever we do our binding, it passes an event, that's this E thing. It also passes coordinates because the mouse dragging passes coordinates, it's just what Windows does. So we can call E dot X underscore root and E dot Y underscore root. And I think we've talked about these in past videos. I've got lots of videos on bindings in the playlist. So check that out if you haven't so far. And that looks good. So we probably don't need this anymore. So I'm going to take this off because we can move it around. And uh, all right, that looks good. So really simple. And that's really all there is to it. So let's head over here and run this. But before we do that, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Whoa, weird commercial. So, okay, let's run this guy again. And now I could drag it over. You can see we can move this guy around. So we can click here. Now, notice if we click down here and try and do it, it doesn't do it because we just bound, we binded, binded, bound the title bar, this frame. So when we click on this, we can move it around. So, all right, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and close this. Now let's add a little X up here that so we can close because we might not want that big honking button there. So how do we do that? So let's come down here a couple different ways. Uh, let's create title text. And here let's create close button on title bar. So let's call this close underscore label. Now you could do this with a label, you could do it with a button, anything you want, really. Buttons probably easier. But I can also do bindings with a label. So I'll just do that because it's kind of more interesting. Otherwise, you could just do a regular button and call root.quit when you hit the command for the button. You know, we've already done that right here, right? You would just put this button inside the label, but I'm going to do it with a label inside the frame here. But this is going to be a label. We want to put it inside of our title underscore bar. There we go. We want the text to equal 
uh, you know, just X or maybe capital X. And I'm going to give it some space, maybe a couple spaces. Again, you could also use pad X for that if you wanted to, or, or internal pad X, whatever you want. And uh, there you go. So for the background color, I'm going to also go dark green. And for the foreground color, let's go white. And then let's close underscore label dot pack this guy. And let's give this a side equals right. You know, this guy up here, we put on left, we want to put this one on the right. And let's also give it a pad Y of four. So let's go ahead and save this and look at this and see how that looks. If we like it, uh oh, I misspelled dark. Misspelled dark. There we go. Dark green. Save this. Come back over here. Run it again. All right. So now we get a little X up there. That looks cool. Now we could give it a border if we wanted to. If it had a button, we would have to remove the border or leave the border. But either way, let's give this a leaf of, let's say, raised and a border of one. Save this, run it. So we get this little button up here. I don't know, that's kind of cool. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. You could also do sunken instead of raised, all the regular relief things that we've looked at in past videos. So, you know, now it's sunken. That's interesting. I don't care for that. I don't want a border at all. So I'm just going to take this off. I'll leave that, but I'll put it to zero. So, okay, now we've got this thing on here. How do we actually make it do something? Well, we could close underscore label dot bind. And this one is going to be button dash one for the button click. And what we want to do, and let's just create a function called quitter this time instead of doing root.quit, which you could probably do. But let's just do a little function real quick, call it quitter, pass in our E. And this is just going to be root.quit, like a function. You could also do root.destroy if you wanted to. Uh, either one of those should work. But go ahead and save this, run this guy one more time. Bring it over here. Now when we click on this X, boom, disappears. Good to go. So I hope you get the idea here of creating your own title bar and then doing anything you want with it. You know, we didn't put an icon. You could easily put an icon just by adding an image like you add an image to anything in Kinter, right? Just stick it up here, give it a side of left, put it like right here in, you know, in front of this label. So the icon would go first and then the label create icon here, right? Whatever. If you wanted to do that, you could do that. Super easy. If you don't know how to add images to Kinter, I've got tons of videos on that in the playlist. So check that out. But uh, really easy. And you have complete control here. You could give it borders. You could not give it borders. You could give it different colors. You could not give it colors. You could have buttons to close it. You could have not buttons to close it. Anything you want, you know, it's up to you. You can have it to where you can move it around by binding it like we did, or you could leave that off if you don't want people to be able to move it around. Sometimes you don't want people to be able to move your windows around. So you just don't add that functionality. So whatever you like, you have complete control. And that's why I like this. It's a little hacky thing that sort of you can do. It's not really built into Kinter. We just sort of, there is no easy way to do this with Kinter. So we have to kind of resort to these hacky measures, but I think it works pretty good and uh, it's pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So it pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.